Okay, this meeting is being recorded. That's what they just said. I when I when I uh, it, whenever I do that, it it says this meeting is being recorded, and I don't understand it because I don't want it to say that. I don't want it to ruin my little show. But uh, anyway, this meeting is being recorded. Okay, you should all know that. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, let me just make sure we're uh, we're going uh, on uh, online here, and that we're our little show is going out to you. Uh, uh, come on, come on! I just uh, oh, there we are. Yeah, pop up. There it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're all ready to go. Let me uh, let me start inviting some people in here. Um, let me see. Admit all. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Watch this. There's Shecky, and there's uh, uh, there's uh, uh, Mike Chisholm, and there is Edward Berger, and there's Steve Bender, and there's uh, Charlie Wallace, and Andrew Deutsch, and Vernon Nunn, and Lynn Frisco. We're probably not going to see Marjorie today because she's out entertaining our guests who are have arrived uh, to spend a week with us. So uh, uh, we're being we've been uh, Albert is out. Uh, visiting us along with his lovely wife and uh so we're gonna we're gonna uh, have dinner in a while and and all of that by the way let me warn you we were told we've had postings everywhere in our apartment building that uh they were going to be doing some work on the electricity here and that we might lose five minutes of power at some point during the day well it hasn't happened so far so let's just stand by and hope it doesn't happen, okay? Don't you have all your computers on backup power, Alex? <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't, you know. And, and I just have a funny feeling I could spend, um, you know, a couple hundred bucks on one of those standby power things, and then the electricity would go out and it still wouldn't work. So, you know, <laughs> I, I waste, and you don't know that till the electricity goes out, so. Do you have a title card with a little dog pulling the electrical cord out of the wall saying, please stand by? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I should have that. Oh, wait a minute. Here she comes. Oh, here comes Marjorie. She's joining us, which means there are going to be other people there. So yeah. Oh, wait huh? a minute. oh there oh, she is. Nobody's this, this is why I come here every week. Mandy and Marjorie, the M&M connection. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy and Marjorie. Yes, Marjorie. What happened to our guests? They're going to go for a walk. Oh, okay. All right. All right. But I thought your walk came. The what? I, I thought your walk came. You they're, said they were that going walk to... came, but they're going for a walk, a walking. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. They're walking around the neighborhood. That was a joke I pulled. I heard. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Shecky, how are you? I'm okay. I'm probably going to come out and see you on uh, Saturday. Yeah, right. Well, what about Albert? Where is he going to be? <laughs> well, I don't know where he's going to be. You want me to bring him? Yeah. If he wanted to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, um, and, and you know, but we'll, they, they, they're in town. They, they've got things to do and people. They're here to see family and friends. Yeah. They've got things to do, nice. people to see, whatever, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. It's like, here's the keys. I stock the refrigerator with breakfast and snacks, and um, <laughs> we'll have dinner with them tonight, and probably go out one one night, and they're on their own. Yeah, yeah, per perfect guests. Called Alex bed and breakfast, right? Yes. <laughs> well, like this for me is a weird week. I have a concert at the Hudson River Park tomorrow night, mm -hmm. and then my stockbroker is back in town, and we have lunch on Wednesday. So. I got two reasons to be in Manhattan this week. Your dance card is full. <laughs> That's full enough for me at this point. Yeah. I take this personally that none of those reasons is coming to see me. <laughs> I would have almost come to see you had yeah. I not got caught in that torrential rainstorm last week. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were coming back from New Jersey. There's another one that's just ending right now. Yeah. No, going to New Jersey because, you know, I'm driving up the Harlem River Drive. It's like, oh, I can get off and go see Alex. And it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Hudson River Park, Shecky. What are you seeing? It's a meeting that's never gonna happen. Uh, Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks. Oh, cool. 
and Harry band that plays 20s yeah. and 30s music. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Also, hello to Edward Berger and his cartoon voice. That's right. <laughs> uh, Steve Bender and his non-cartoon voice. Yeah. Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace is down there in Texas. Where you in can, the rain. Where you can buy a gun if you've got a cold. That could be <laughs> and Andrew Deutsch is with us, uh, the ever popular and very funny Andrew Deutsch. But I don't want to put pressure on you. Today, today I'm only providing yes and no answers. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that Andrew tipped me off to that show Louder Milk. Me it's too. Very it's good. great. I'm, I'm almost done with it. We watched a couple episodes. I liked it. Did you like it, Marjorie? She doesn't what was it called? Louder Milk. How, how could you yeah, not like Louder Milk? We only saw milk. one episode. Huh? What? We only saw one episode. Saw two episodes. Two? Well, it's, a, it's the Farrelly brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, he's a, he's a uh, what, what, what is he? He's like a, a recovering out addict. addict. Out and he's an, a baseball announcer. At, at, at a, He's, he's a music critic, former music critic. Yeah, former music critic. Oh, you're you're sorry, thinking I'm of a different show, that. Mandy. You, I am thinking of a different show. You're thinking of the, of the other one about the sports guy. Yeah, it's very yeah. similar in my mind to that one. Because everybody's a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Kind, it's kind of like Bad Santa as a sobriety counselor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vernon Nunn. Yeah. Uh, you, is that the Ozarks where you vacation? No, this is uh, West Central Virginia. I don't know if you can see the mountain over my shoulder, but that's the that's the border with West Virginia, the top of that oh. mountain. Oh, cool. Could you go do something about Joe Manchin for us? Yes, please. I'd like Why to go better? box his ears. Yeah, I'd like to go I'd like to go slap him around a little bit. I'd say, you're a Democrat? Come on. Please, I, I hear he's being courted by the Republican exchange. He might as well. It's ridiculous. We don't want him. No, well, he don't. said the right to vote has been overly publicized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't need the right to vote. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the right people. The right middle people. of the road, supposedly. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The filibuster is more important than your right to vote. I think what our problem is exactly is get a guy who's like an egotist. Okay. Oh no, he'll run for president in 2024. Trust me. <laughs> he had an article. Uh, I think in the day's Washington Post. Yeah, an op-ed. Yeah. Op-ed. Yeah. yeah. And Len Lafrisco is with us, and Mandy, who is what are you doing there, Mandy? It looks like you're knitting. Oh no, you're oh. opening mail. Opening, opening mail. mail. Okay. Sorry. Is there anybody in the office? Everybody's here. Oh, everybody's there. I'm going to work today. Yeah. And you're going to Even work. Even the boss, the big man. I work today from home. Big boss is here. The, the big boss is here. Well, yeah. but, I mean, like he could he could walk in at any minute, so you know I'll be shutting it down. Mm. Okay. Um, just to make it look like she's working. Well, if, if I were a business, yeah, I mean, who would you that's what I do. My yeah. in, who would you be can hear. to if I were a business? Because I can then play that role if he walks in. Mm. Um, <laughs> to say you're the air conditioning vendor that I was trying to get into. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. About one of his. <laughs> we can all be air conditioning vendors if you need to be. I'm having, yeah. I'm having to do property management right now. Well, maybe you could send your boss into space with Jeff Bezos. <laughs> He's going on the first ride, he said. Yeah. Bezos is going to go on the first Yeah, ride. Next, next week. Call. Next week. It's in July, I thought. Oh, is it July? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. But he's going to be on that first flight. Oh, I wonder, uh, is, is, is uh, what's her name? He's not married yet to what's her name? The girlfriend. Yeah. So if he dies and crashes in that thing. You talk about great marketing. He's going to make a delivery of some cheap crap nobody needs at the space station. <laughs> <laughs> well, you he know gets what? to be his own drone. <laughs> but isn't he just going up and like 12 minutes later coming down? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. He's doing Maybe whippets. Up and around. And yeah. <laughs> it's like going on the side space of Pony Island. Come on, come on the um, like you know, my, roller coaster. <laughs> sounds like one of yeah. my bad nights with drugs. You know, you go up and you come down. That's it. Very fast. Seven minutes. How yeah. many people on here, if they were given a free ticket to go on that flight, would go? Not on the first round. Not on the on first the, round. On that round. On that round beside Jeff. I have nothing yep. left to live for anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
accept I'd it, be Marjorie. Second. I would totally do it. Would you join me, Marjorie, if I went up to space? If you went up and paid for it, I'd join you. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't What's be home. What, $350,000? Yeah, much? but Alex is an inter internet influencer. He could probably go for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Take your iPhone and record the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your new, I'm uh, sure there's a bench up there. My newest your new back, camera. My newest acquisition. Here we go. Oh. That's, when, a, uh, that's a, a nine. Got a gimbal. Nice. They're up to nine already? No, it doesn't have a gimbal. They, they don't need gimbals anymore. This thing, I can shake it like this and it won't shake. Yeah. And also it has a thing now, horizon leveler, that if I can turn it upside down, it will still say stay flat. Wow. Yeah. But it's and where do you get like, wonderful it's got a screen on the front. And all you do oh. is um video your walk through Central Park. <laughs> well, I mean, this is for our when we go on our next vacation. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Which is going to be when? <laughs> We're working on this fiscal year, hopefully. This fiscal year. Well, I mean, where are we going to go? We can't go to Europe because it's still a problem. Well, when it's not a problem, we're going to Italy and Switzerland. In fact, they said that what happened was in uh, in England, they've managed to do away with a lot of, you know, with a lot of the problem, but also it's coming back now. There's the new Delta strain coming in from India. Yeah. No, and it has a strain, and so does Brazil. And so one Brazil's of, in bad shape. Of, I mean, if we wanted to go to England, they couldn't do that. And I wouldn't. No, they're going through their fourth wave, I think. And yeah, if, I have a friend in Manchester who's afraid they're going to shut down again very soon. Yeah. This variant. But what about what about France? How's France doing? I don't know. Or well, Italy? Come, come to California. No, we're all good out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, actually, we're reopening the economy on the fifteenth. No masks, no nothing. Charlie, for Charlie's information, we just I just read where New York now is at the lowest infection rate since the pandemic began. Yeah, here too. You know, but that could change in a week. Yep, it could change yeah. in a week. Yeah, did you hear yeah. that they're planning this big New York celebration with 60,000 people in Central Park? Oh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting, what, what are they celebrating, Steve? Just, the re, just New York is back. They're getting Clive Davis to get the, get the artists. Oh, this, oh, that's ridiculous. Let's, I think it's ridiculous. Not temp fate. So yeah. I, yeah, right? I thought, yeah. I mean, did you guys, we should have did you guys hear about the profession? Here, you know? Did you hear about what? the professional golfer who had to drop out of a tournament over the weekend because he tested positive for COVID after the third round? Yeah. And he was and he six was strokes six ahead. Strokes. He was six strokes ahead and he had to quit. Oh. Oh. He'd been vaccinated. He'd been vaccinated. He'd been vaccinated. Yeah. And he was asymptomatic. It wasn't right. like he just came near, let's say, me who had COVID. You know, it wasn't like he had the symptoms. Wow. Yeah. So far, all the cases I've heard of of people who were vaccinated and who got it were asymptomatic. So that's kind of scary. Our friends. Oh, oh that's good. Yeah, that's but good. Because they may not be infectious. Infectious. There's yeah. there's a simple solution. You 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 get the government to authorize all of the medical insurance companies as of July one. You no longer have to cover any symptoms or any any illness for someone who's not vaccinated related to COVID. If you don't get the vaccine, you give up your right to have the medical coverage. Done. Oh, that's socialism. I know. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. You know, yeah. It's simple. You you don't want to get vaccinated because it's not it's not you're telling me it's not dangerous. You're not going to get sick. You're going to survive. So no health insurance. Okay, what you're on your own. Also, is I was like uh, one of the first ones when they said you want to get a shot. We immediately signed up. Okay, mm -hmm. Jackie immediately signed up. Yeah, we didn't get prizes. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, we didn't get free beer or anything. February, towards the end of February, we got our second shot, right? We were in there early. We don't get any prizes. Oh. No, nothing. Don't you get like steak? Don't you get a bird? Nothing. nothing. Didn't oh, some Kentucky. woman like in Ohio get a million dollars? We could have got Krispy Kreme. Won the lottery or Krispy whatever. Kreme, the they've given away two million dollars so far. Kentucky has, suit. Kentucky has followed suit. Kentucky has followed suit with uh, Ohio. 
and, and they're going to have three drawings in Kentucky. They mm -hmm. have three drawings. Yeah. Yeah. And all you have to do is register and say where you got your shot, and they'll verify the records of that healthcare company. How did, the same thing. How did they and, come up with the number three, the average number of teeth in the average Kentuckian? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's that's how many num how many fingers you want to hold up, you know. Yeah, but he yeah. for how many fingers you have. <laughs> yeah, Here's and if you worked in the mine, <laughs> tell the girl who won a million dollars on TV. I would piss me off. A million dollars. Plus, plus all her school paid for. <laughs> Can you people hear me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 in California. A uh, Gavin Newsom made it available the, the prizes, which is like a million dollars or something. I don't know scholarships, stuff like it's that. Fifty, yeah. Uh, they made it available to everyone who's gotten a shot. That's so, right. You know, people like me, I'd be in the in the running for it. But here in New York, our governor is so fucking cheap. You know what he's giving away if you go lottery and, tickets. He says you can win five million dollars, <laughs> and you go, wow, we're beating out Ohio five million dollars. It turns out what he's doing is he's giving people lottery tickets. A dollar lottery tickets. Right. <laughs> Probably <laughs> making sure that none of them are winners. With a top, yeah. <laughs> a top prize of five. Yeah, but wait till Andrew needs the next shiny gold coin and then he'll come up with a better offer. Well, he did legalize marijuana and I'm delighted about that. <laughs> well, where, where can yeah, I? Yeah, but can you buy it yet? Marjorie. I still buy it from my friend in California who gets exactly. it from a grower in Oregon. Because it's going to take so a couple of years. It, but where do you get it in New York State? Certainly smell it everywhere. I could do it medically. <laughs> I could do it, get it medically because of my back, but then I would have to give up my pain pills, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> no pain pills. Oh, yeah. mm. Well, you, you, but soon, the next couple of years, we'll be getting it. There'll be stores all over the place. Why? Yeah, but then the next governor will cancel that legal marijuana or something. Now, I, once it's around, it'll be here for no, I think. Yeah. 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 Up here in Canada, there's no chance we're going back. And Alex, yeah, you are quiet, buddy. I don't know what it is. It's your microphone or whatever, but you are quiet. I am. Here, can you hear me okay now? So, yeah, so when you fresh. sat back, you got real quiet. Oh, okay. yeah. That's because I'm not as close to the mic. Anyway. I'll um, be glad when Kentucky legalizes marijuana because they're growing industrial hemp now, so they ought to grow some really good pot. <laughs> Do you know what else New York legalized it last, just recently is no Sunday um, liquor laws where you, you mm -hmm. can't drink till afternoon. You can... It, drink anywhere now any day they've done away with it in new york yeah isn't our president giving away free beer to anybody <laughs> and has a bush is, that's is good. Has a bush. Yeah. Well, that's mine's a just fine how's yours thank uh. you <laughs> <laughs> um, bill, bill marsh said yeah we should all be drinking lots of water that's what he thinks about anheuser beer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, uh, uh, and the president's saying, get a, get a shot, get a beer. And I'm going, are we encouraging uh, alcoholism now? <laughs> a shot and a beer. <laughs> Is it still illegal to drink like in a park? Because you could smoke a joint now on a park bench, but you can't drink a beer, right? In New York? Yeah. I don't think you can. I don't think you can drink, but you can smoke a joint. It's called pu public consumption of alcohol. Right. Or you can publicly smoke weed. Well, there's no public thing against public consumption of weed, except that weed was illegal all along, but people still smoked it in the park. Yeah. My, my neighbor smokes it here. next door. Here, here in New York City, yeah. they are closing down uh, uh, Washington, Washington Square. Square Park at 10 o'clock at yeah, night. There was a riot the other night almost. Yeah, yeah they caused a riot to happen. Um, mm. Before, oh, it was just people playing loud music and getting stoned. <laughs> it's, because, it's because all the rich people that live around the park who left came back and now they don't want to hear any noise. Oh, yeah. you mean the people, are, yeah, right. There's this yeah. Oh, these townhouses. That yes. Wow. In the square yeah. Park. yeah, I guess that's the reason why. But the cops were roughing people up. I mean, come on. Uh, uh, closing Washington Square Park at 10 o'clock at night? That's ridiculous. ridiculous. 
it's it's one of the more frequented parks in New York City, especially at night. It's especially if you're doing drugs or you're getting a blow job or you're <laughs> both at the same time. <laughs> or if you're giving a blow job for drugs. Two <laughs> things I personally endorse. Um, and and both at the same time. That'd be fine with me. You know. But our mayor thinks it's just fine because everything is great in New York City. Really? Yeah. Yeah, apparently. So yeah. who do we vote for for mayor? I mean, just... Andrew Wang. Give me Yang. a break. Yang Wang. <laughs> Wang. <laughs> Yang. Did you hear uh, yesterday we... Maya Wiley got endorsed by uh, AOC. AOC? Yeah. 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 Well, Marjorie well, already, here's what Marjorie did. Maya Marjorie, Wiley. I got to tell you, my wife is a lovely human being <laughs> who I think is one of the smarter people that I know. But sometimes she just gets fucking dumb. Okay? And what she did is she went out and she voted already. I can't hear you. You voted already. Absentee ballot. You can't hear me. You voted already. Okay? <laughs> Right? I'm going to say goodbye. Obviously, yes, I have to work. Bye, Mandy. Mandy, Bye. thanks for the... Since I have to work. Good yeah. luck. Good. Good. Fight the People power. keep interrupting me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, and I can't afford to support you, so you better... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Everybody wave goodbye. Everybody wave goodbye. There we go. <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yeah. So... Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew voted Andrew early. Voted. What? Said, voted for the mayor already. Already. And my argument for her is, you know, you haven't even really heard all the candidates yet. You know, and she, you just voted for what? Who I voted, voted for the woman that ran the sanitation department. Catherine Garcia. They, Eddie, oh, the one who gave out the $5 million bribe to some company the other <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> well, she, it's because she was endorsed by the New York Times. Right. Well, that's true, too. It was, and what it was, if in the next three weeks the New York Times pulls their endorsement? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Have they ever done that? Wait. Has anyone have they ever pulled an endorsement? I, I don't think. Oh, I think so. Look, have to be a look scam. At, I'm not going to say poor Scott Stringer. Another woman yesterday came out thirty years ago. He yeah. fondled <laughs> me in a bar. It took you thirty years been, to remember. You know, if if if. Let's say I had fucked Scott, Scott Springer. Okay. Uh, I would not admit to it. <laughs> well, number one, yes. But number two, 30 years later, you just remembered. And he's, he's the most progressive of the bunch, I think. Scott Springer? Yeah. But he's like the perpetual candidate. He never. Uh, he oh, yeah. Is. He's one of those guys. Yeah. He runs every time. Who was the guy down in Pennsylvania, someplace like that, always used to run for president? Harold Stassen. Harold Stassen. Yeah. Well, he's the Harold Stassen, the mayoral candidate. <laughs> yeah, but just the idea, as I say, of some woman coming out. I and mean, look, I'm not. But 30 years ago? Yeah. And you just remembered? And, <laughs> and, 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 it must have been a memorable groping. <laughs> what are and she's so brave that she's come forward you know you know and i have nothing in favor of this man but you know what i mean i think that we should just ask every one of these people like andrew yang what are your qualifications he's never run anything yeah so i mean uh what are his qualifications for being mayor people know he's donald trump. He's, he's the new donald trump yeah, people and look what that did to us yeah, yeah. He's got the name recognition, and he says he's going to give you two thousand dollars, so idiots will vote for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he, and, he, and he rides the roller coaster with his kids. Oh yeah. I'm he's afraid this ranked voting is might lead to some bad finale. Right. <laughs> You're going to get like the third person for, from everybody is going to become the mayor. Scott Springer has this uh, Stringer. The Stringer. Stringer. Stringer has this uh, some unusual advertising voice. Like oh, he's got a little yeah. kid. <laughs> oh God endorsing it it's terrible and, and then the next ad he's got two kids he's taking out to coney island and I'm wondering, what's he doing with all these kids it just doesn't look right but that's how <laughs> bill de blasio got elected is that he dragged out that son with the afro Man. oh oh yes i remember that. Well, you remember those black. ads and yeah. that's when the guy broke through because he had this really cute 16 year old at that time whatever he was 
Wow, yeah, you're right. You're right. And he had a big afro and he was personable and oh, I'm gonna vote for that guy because he's got this, you know. Mm. Mm. My wife has compared the stringer commercials to like the cars for kids commercials. <laughs> 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 Boy, I got to hate those commercials. Oh, don't you? My God. You know, and they well, did you see, did you see they freshened them up with new kids, but the same voices still singing the song? <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, they'll take home rent. They'll take homes now. You know, <laughs> we'll take cars. We'll take boats. And if you want to give us your home, okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think we need the kids for cars. You can get rid of those brats and get something to drive. Right. <laughs> Right. And again, you know, you know, I always get on the Jews because I'm Jewish. It's again, it's it's Williamsburg Jews that are stealing money. You know, that's cars for kids. Yeah. Was that in cars for kids? Or? Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're in they're New Jersey. Orthodox. Yeah. It's as we Jews would call them, the Yids. Yeah. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> one eight head one eight seven seven cars for kids. One, you know. <laughs> you, go out to, you go out to Williamsburg in, in Brooklyn and you feel like you're spending the day at B&H Photo. <laughs> <laughs> you ever notice B&H Photo, if you ever try and buy anything on Saturday online, they won't. You can't. You, you, yeah. can't, you can't even get to anything. Wow. They observe the Sabbath. So, Vernon, how's life going for you? Oh, I'm enjoying uh, this is the second week of my two week vacation here in the mountains. And I was having a hell of a time with my allergies until I came here. And now I sit out here on the balcony. My, my sinuses all open up and I can breathe. It's but why is nice. that? Why would you and you're that? surrounded by trees and grass. I, I don't know. I think it's just the fresh air, the you fresh know, mountain it air. Also be, it yeah. could be what you in particular are allergic to is not currently in bloom where you are. Right, that could be too. Because it's we like normally come here, and we normally come here in the fall for two weeks. But you know, we were suffering from a little bit of uh, COVID. You know, being at home too much, and so cabin fever. Yeah, yeah COVID yeah. fever. So uh, the wife wanted to come for a couple of weeks here in the springtime. So because we were going on a cruise this time last year before it got canceled when the COVID <laughs> hit. This is a better decision. Now, are you, uh, Shecky, are you hitting the uh, the cruises at all this year? Well, I've got the Christmas cruise for 10 days. Where are you going? Caribbean. Oh, okay. I had one booked, I can't remember. I think it was Alaska in July, but of course that was canceled. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I would go on one of those cruises with you, except the girlfriend would then never talk to me again. Well, you could get in a cab and take <laughs> off. I would talk to me. you, Alex. What? You could go on the cruise. <laughs> there goes the excuse. <laughs> well, there goes my excuse. Uh, <laughs> well, I've always told Shecky that I the idea of a, a cruise just never really appeals to me. But oh, he, they're great. But I love them so much. I always have a blast on the cruise. Yeah. Really? I've never had a bad cruise. No, no I've, I've never had a bad cruise. I had you do that, Marjorie? We should do a cruise. No, I did one and that's it. Not you no want to do, do something original? Do a Las Vegas cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I hear the one to Alaska is just uh, up a through Alaska. Well, that's what I always joke. They take you somewhere new every day. You don't have to pack your luggage. Yeah, that's right. You open up the window and you look out and it's a new island or a new place. It's wonderful. Yeah, but what, what if you say, hey, I like that there. I'd like to stay there for a couple of days. Then you but go then back. you know you can come back <laughs> yeah. next year or two years later. So it's almost like, I don't know how to describe it, but like you're try, just try before you buy. Places you might like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love going to Cabo. And the reason I love going to Cabo is I saw Cabo on a cruise once, and then yep. it was okay. Put that on the list, and then I've been I, back to Cabo five or six times since then. Yeah, we just booked an all-inclusive in Cabo for the end, end of the year, so we'll be doing that. I'll nice. tell you, we were we were down in uh, Belize, uh, mm -hmm. and um, we were it, we were in the main city in Belize, which is I guess Belize, Belize City. Belize City. Yeah. <laughs> How did I forget that? Oddly <laughs> enough. <laughs> 
anyway, uh, Belize City, and um, uh, then the cruise comes in. Yeah. It's like this town is empty. And then all of a sudden the cruise comes in, and it's like thousands of people. Yep, that was us. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> All of a sudden, it's everybody back on board, and it's oh, at five vacuum. o'clock, and the place yeah, yeah closes, like a vacuum you know. cleaner sucked up everybody. <laughs> you don't want to get left behind. What's it's interesting left. is the ships have to anchor five miles off the coast because the water gets too shallow when they come in close. Yeah, that's oh, right. They have yeah. to send out their own boats. And stuff. Yeah, they send the tenders well, in to. It would happen in Belize in the last week. What? This woman who is the girlfriend of this billionaire's son apparently shot the police chief oh jeez wow dead dead pushed him in the he fell into the water oh right so she's in prison though they put they yeah they but apparently the guy out. had a alcohol level this police chief of three times <laughs> normal wow and he supposedly her version is he was teaching her how to load and unload a gun <laughs> <laughs> oops <laughs> Oops. <laughs> do you do you know how Belize came up became a country? It was no, part of Gua, it was them. part of Guatemala, and the Guatemalans wanted the British to build a highway to cross the country. So the Brits said, "If you give us this piece of land, we'll build the highway for free." So they created this new country, this new colony of of Britain Belize. called Belize. And then the Brits said, "Well, we got our country now. You don't need a highway." <laughs> oh, really? Is that true? Yes. Yes. Before it, became oh Belize, it was, before it became Belize, it was called British Honduras. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh but it was, it was, the, the land was, was part of Guatemala. And it also, it also, I mean, the one thing about it down there, so far as money is concerned, they use the American dollar. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know. Yep. But it, the, the Brits, the Brits basically stole it from the natives, <laughs> as usual. I, I was watching Kamala Harris today uh, in Guatemala. Uh huh. Why? <laughs> why were you watching or why is she there? She's down there giving a speech going, don't come see us. <laughs> it's, it's a little it's short a of what she was really country. saying. That's why. It, it was, let's, let's build up the country so you don't have to come here. Let's create opportunity and then the corruption so that we don't oh, have to yeah, do what you're yeah. like, And like the guy who runs the country is going to go, yeah, let's stop corruption. Oh, he he's, never will. I've, he's I've done enough business cool. down there over the years. It's, it's insane. Yeah, it's a dangerous place. I mean, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, but the people the whole, are coming here because you know the, the, the crime and the gangs and the you know the gang wars and all of that. Poverty, poverty. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, sounds like Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> We're a giant magnet here, is what we are. Uh, for people who think. There's money to be made here, but there's only exploitation to be had here. They don't understand that. Well, it's it's not as much about the money as it is about the safety. They think if they cross the border and they get a shitty job, that's fine. But at least there's not gangs coming after them, conscri doing conscription of their children and, and killing them. Have you seen the Capitol riots? <laughs> no, no, that was a tourist tour. They were just tourists. <laughs> They're only tourists. They're only yeah. looking. They forgot yeah. to get tickets to go on the tour, but who yeah, knew? when they were screaming "Hang Mike Pence," it meant they wanted to put up another portrait. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. What, what made it more uh, easier to take was the Putin this week came out saying that the Capitol riots were just people wanting to protest for change. Yeah, they just had political protests on their mind. Now, now, this from a guy who, if they did the same thing in his country, would quietly shoot them in their sleep. That's right. Yeah, he yeah. just poisoned them so they could die the next day and he wouldn't get blamed for it. <laughs> yeah, right. Here, have some of Putin's beluga caviar. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's breath spray, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you got Manchin. This is, uh, we don't talk politics much around here, but these are funny people we're talking about. Joe Manchin, uh, who... Uh, uh, I, too many isn't from Maryland because then we could call him Maryland Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if, he, if he and Marjorie Taylor Greene got together, he and Mansion oh, no. would have a bill that would be called Green Mansion. 
<laughs> Didn't you try that joke last week? Yeah. Did. did I do it last week? Oh God, I got well, a, ma- a mansion. A mansion in in West Virginia is a double wide. I've got to do a flow chart. <laughs> I've got to do a flow chart on my joke. You know. Oh, I did this on the Monday show. Hey, I can use it on the evening show now. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, you know, you know me. I love to go after Harry and the prostitute. Oh, we're going to well, name our child. You keep after calling Queen her Elizabeth. a prostitute. You keep calling her a prostitute. She was. She's not a prostitute anymore. She's mom. Yeah, but she. They named the kid after Queen Elizabeth and Princess Diana. Diana. Yeah. Yeah. It's Lily Beth. Lily Beth Diana. Lily oh, Bet. gee, how'd you do that? How much money can we make off calling her Lily Bet? <laughs> well, at least I'll get a nice gift for the kid. Yeah. <laughs> Lily Bet. Uh, but well, why do you call her a whore? You're always calling her the whore. She was. Well, no, she was she... not. No, she wasn't a whore. I think you're mistaking Hollywood actress with whore. Okay. You know, and, and the two are not necessarily the same thing. Maybe it was when Joan Crawford was in the business. Well, she was a whore. She was a whore, yeah. And yeah. she hated her sister, too. By the way, I saw something last night. You know this, uh, uh, Shecky. Uh, they were running on the TCM. They were watching Laugh Clown Laugh with Ron Cheney. Oh, yeah, the Ron Cheney film. Yeah, and the woman in the picture is Loretta Young. Loretta Young, who was very... Who was about 14 or 15, 15 at that time. when she made this film. Today, you could never make that film with a 15-year-old because it's about a guy who raises a, a, a girl, a wayward girl who she finds or whatever, and raises her to be an adult and then uh, falls in love with her. Oh. Uh, and uh, he becomes a clown, or he is a clown. Yeah. And, yeah. and you could never make that movie today. Number one, forget about the fact that here's somebody who raised somebody, and now he's in love with her and wants to have sex with her. But also the fact that the lead in the picture is 15 years old. But that's the age many of them were in the late 20s, in the 20s and 30s. Well, that, that's right. I mean, when they made movies. Yes, when they made movies, yeah. yeah. Well, she'd been and you're movie. not that far removed from a time where people were getting married at that age. Yeah. Well, you still can in Kentucky. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> not, not if you're not related. No, you have to have mommy's permission. You have to have mommy's permission, but you yeah. can get married. <laughs> but now, I mean, in Hollywood, you know, that was, can I call it the age? And they looked a lot older. They didn't look 14. Yeah, when I watched the film, uh, I watched the, I looked, you know, I saw the pre discussion on it beforehand after the fact. And I didn't know any of that to be true. And I, of course, she was 15 when she made this movie. And she had started making movies, Loretta Young, when she was four years old. You know, they really started them young then. You know, and then she had the child with Clark Gable, you know. She did have a child with Clark Gable. Didn't she? Yeah, she disappeared to Europe for nine months in 1936. Oh, really? Hmm. And then came back and, like, six months later, adopted a young girl. Is that the way they handled it in those days? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody could take the fact that maybe she just got pregnant and had a kid? Not in 1935, 36. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, he knocked her up when they make Call of the Wild in 35. Yeah, yeah. Um, so but, she had to, you know, and that was what it was in those days. You disappear for a while. And either you give up the child for adoption or... You come back and say you adopted it, yeah. Because she's a, she was or became a very, very religious woman. Oh, really? Loretta Young? And had a chapel in her home. Really? Wow. Yeah, later that, years. That's some interesting therapy right there. She tells her child that her child has been adopted when her child really wasn't adopted. So the child's got to go through all the, 
well, things this, that this come with finding out that you're adopted. The, the, and the child parents. had very big ears. <clears throat> yeah, but the question is, was the child told by her, no, you're no. my daughter? No. Okay. So she, was, so the public she is... was made to believe she was adopted. Yes. And so, I can't remember hmm. right this second if she found out before Loretta Young died or was after she died. Well, who was that the she one? was her actual daughter? Here's <laughs> one that that I always found very interesting was William Hurst's daughter. Oh yeah, that was um yeah Marion Davies' um child. They, he had a child with Marion Davies, and, and it was raised by Marion Davies' sister. By her sister and. Wow. Uh, wasn't her sister married to Arthur Lake? Arthur Lake, yeah. yes. Who was Dagwood in the Dagwood and Blondie movies. If anybody remembers wow. that at all. And, yeah. and they raised her and she was, and, and to her credit, he did give her money to live on and stuff, you know. Yeah, but also let's not forget that when Hearst went broke, Marion Davies saved his life by yeah. giving him her fortune. Yeah. Well, she sold, she owned, ready for this, in New York City. Alex, <laughs> turn around. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, uh, it's- but Albert's back. Here. It's Albert. It's, it's <laughs> Albert, wait a minute, let me turn the, the, let me turn this up a little bit too. Can <laughs> <hear you. laughs> hey, Albert, you can take off the mask, you've been vaccinated. Kind of place is this? Everywhere you gotta wear a mask. <laughs> oh. Here, come sit over here. here. You sit on Alex's lap. Tell us a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just how well, big of a pain in your ass was Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear them at all. Can't hear them at all. Here, Emma, talk, talk, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 Albert. Hello. 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 Hi. Yeah. So that's what two people in the same room look like. I kind of, for, kind of forgot about that. <laughs> they make me wear this the whole time. What kind of state is this? Yeah. It's no good. Well, they tell Certainly us. Certainly not a Florida, is it? They tell us that if you've had the shot, you can't get it. Right? And yeah. then, then we go into a grocery store and they say you got to wear the mask. I don't understand. You need a better governor like we have. In <laughs> Yeah, but our, our governor is uh, get, gets the women. Uh, I, I don't know about it. I'm sure our governor gets the women too. Governor de, de, governor de Satan, that one? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh, he's visiting us now. He's not actually in uh, Florida yeah. calling this that's, in. That's why I'm here. Are you going to make him produce the show while he's here? <laughs> again. Never again. Never again. Huh? I'll pop off to the side. Are you going to pop off yeah, to the side? I'll watch. I'll watch. You, you just watch what's going on? Okay. Yeah. Go watch That's the master guest, at work. Our special guest star, ladies and gentlemen, Albert Reynoso. Uh, he's got an iPad. He could join in in the conversation if he has an iPad. Yeah, well, either that or you can go on with Marjorie's in the next room. Um, <laughs> but you'd have to lie in bed no, with No, her. I'm not lying in bed. Yeah, that'll, that'll be some good idea. <laughs> go, go, get Albert, go get Albert to climb in with Marjorie. That'll be good. <laughs> but I got TMZ on the, on the horn here. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's got six cameras in here. I got one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. Well, yeah. Seven. Wow. Seven. And you and, and there are two in the other room too. So where's mine? I can't have one. Well, no, but it it it's a question of that we're doing this on Zoom, oh, and right. so it has to go out on yeah. Zoom. Okay. Uh, 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 I'm trying to think what I could do to do. No, sorry camera. to interrupt. Continue, continue. I could have set that up. Yeah. Add a second so, camera. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have Zoom on his phone? He can just <laughs> sit there and Zoom. Well, that's his twin brother right there. It's. Uh, <laughs> I know him. <laughs> what's 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 Cuomo's brother's name? Uh, Chris. Chris. Yeah, that's that's Chris Deutsch. Was <laughs> hey, stop insulting me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, so we we got it from Marion Davies and the kid, and uh, Hurst took good care of her. So, you know, it wasn't like, uh, like he was, uh, it, he, and he admitted to being the father to them. 
didn't he? I mean, she knew she was his daughter. I believe she knew, but it was never, quote, publicly made, you know, for obvious reasons. There was one other story of somebody who was raised and was told, told they were adopted, and then they found out that the woman they were living with was in fact their mother. Well, it would always be like it's Aunt Sally. And then you'd find out 30 years later, that was actually your mother. But there was somebody very famous that I remember that this happened to and that they found out about, uh, uh, could have been Richard. Wasn't Pryor. it an actor? Could Wasn't have been it Richard a male? Pryor, maybe Richard Pryor. No, I think it was a male his, uh, actor hmm. who found out that he had been, a, that is, his mother, his grandmother raised them and his mother was like a big sister. The sister, yeah, sister yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It turned out it was his mother. Boy. There was an actor, I can't remember his name. I don't know, when you wake up one day and turn your head out, how you, how you deal with that. Mm. You know, that would be... <laughs> Did you say Richard Pryor? Wasn't he born under Bordello? Yes. Yes, he was born. Yeah. Yeah. Dad was a pimp, mom was a worker. I think that's what it was. And he was raised by his grandmother, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. But his mother, his grandmother ran the whorehouse. Yes. Yeah. And was pimping out his mother. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Like, supposedly she <laughs> And was a comedy born. genius was born. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what it gave him material. Born. Yeah. A two-year-old yeah. walks into a brothel and <laughs> so I, I was watching the uh, last episode of that late night thing, that late night show they did. That was good, Alex. Yeah, uh, in which you're talking about the modern people. And it really like somebody said, well, late night is all over the place now. It's not just late night. Well, then it's not late night. Well, how do you define this? You know, um, the fact that NBC goes out and hires somebody because she's got, uh, what, nine million uh, subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. They're, an they're an influencer. Yeah, Lily, yeah that was Lily, an Lily experiment. Thing. They just fired her, by the way. They decided it wasn't a good idea. I tried. I tried to watch it. I found her unwatchable. I, I gave her, her first couple weeks, I gave her some watches, and then I a couple months in, I gave her, and I just, I found it. And I've got a pretty high tolerance for such things. I love it. I'm a student of that stuff. But I I, I couldn't connect with her at all. Well, I'm <laughs> Who is that? I'm sorry. Lily Singh. Lily Singh was her name. I never even heard she, she, name. She's an influencer. She influenced him to turn off the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but you know, that, that show was filmed over two years ago. What? Oh, really? Oh, was it really? Well, Rick Ludwin, who's all over like episodes three, four, five, died two years ago. Oh, I thought you meant Lily's show. Yeah, no. That, no, no, yeah. no. This, this Bill Carter show, yeah. Oh, oh, the guy who did uh, did the show. Yeah. Which, which guy is dead? Rick Ludwin. Oh, okay. The one who created Seinfeld or put it on the air and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. He was the he was one of the NBC pinheads. He was oh. a good guy, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our final show at NBC. He was the one when the show was running long, was in the control room, and our associate director, Brian McElhin, turned and said, Rick, can we just keep running? And he goes, take as long as you want. Huh. Oh, really? Rather than at 12, well, whatever time we rent, what we, you know, like the show is 60 minutes, you're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why that show ran 15 minutes over. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I watched the, uh, the first uh, CBS show. It was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. You know, uh, who there's did? someone on this group who thinks the second show was better than the first, but <laughs> no. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You know, I mean, um, it's all it's all relative due to age. That's all it I is. I also watched the last show, and at the very end, they do a montage, and then they have the photographs of everybody that works there, and your single picture comes up, check, and it's a really good picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really nice picture of you. And I said, and as you know, I still had the same title I had in 1982 because I never <laughs> wanted to change it. Yeah, film coordinator. Did they? Yeah, means absolutely nothing. Did they? <laughs> did they want to change it at some point, or? Oh, I could have had it changed. What would you have changed it to? 
probably probably executive producer. Producer, yeah. <laughs> kind of producer yeah. credit. You know, one of those when we finally had like twenty seven producers on the show. I think film coordinator was actually a great title. Well, because don't forget, if you were in my office, I had a sixteen millimeter projector. Wow. I had film reels. I had a screen film coordinator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Eddie Hall had visuals coordinator and wouldn't let me have that title. So <laughs> film coordinator. Wow. My uh, my cousin was a page on the NBC Letterman show in New York for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, her her dad, my uncle. Well, worked with, with GE in the law offices. And so he knew Bob Wright and all those guys. So they were all, you know, thick as thieves, I guess. So yeah, it was, uh, she said it was uh, an interesting place to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, most of those, like, again, I always joke, 90% of our staff be, were either pages or interns eventually. Yeah, sure. Because you were indoctrinated into how the show worked. Mm. And the times that we hired somebody from outside, they never worked. I remember oh. correctly at the networks, the in position was either in the mail room or as a page. Mm. Yeah, well, you can remember Regis was a page, um, Gene Rayburn was a page, you know, going back <laughs> to the 30s. I was, I was a page at CBS. For the uh, ah. conventions in San Francisco, the Republican Convention, 1956, I was a page. Really? No, I'm like a different Cronkite. Oh, I kept him from throwing up on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but, 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 you no. know, you you know, like if you worked at SN, did SNL or did Letterman or did what? You learned how it worked. Yeah, well, uh, I I I learned a lot that week, but I because they left town after that it was like the circus came to town. Mm. I was never able to use that. That yeah, but if you've been in New York, it's a different thing, and you know you had that, and you networked, obviously, you know. Mm. I, I watched um, what's his name direct the director. What was his name? Did sixty minutes. Uh, uh, oh, Mike you it on you it was the director oh, yeah. on the on the convention. And I sat there in the control room watching this guy direct. I learned everything I need to know about directing just watching him. Hmm. Yeah. It was a great week for me. How did, how did you keep Cronkite from throwing up? Well, uh, they said, we need a page boy in the, in the studio. And a basket. <laughs> no, and I, and I, so I went in, and there's Cronkite. And he says, uh, hey, could you do me a favor? He says, here's some money. Go buy me some, like... Uh, Alpha Seltzer or whatever, whatever comes or whatever, because if I don't, I'm going to hurl on Nancy. <laughs> and I said, sure. And I ran out, I got him some and I brought it back. You know, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> my most memorable moment was when they said that we need a page boy in Mr. Murrow's office. Ooh. So I walk, I opened the door to his office. You know, these are all temporary offices because they were built in, yeah. in the cow palace. Mm. Or anything else. And I open up the door, and there is nothing but a wall of smoke. <laughs> I said, my God, it's true. He does smoke. I mean, <laughs> he was smoking like a chimney, and so was everybody else in that office. Sure. So, yeah. Wow. And then let's see here. What else did I have to do? Oh, I, I had to uh, lead uh, uh, Mrs. Paley and her, uh, her entourage into the cow palace to their seat. And huh. um, uh, as I'm just walking in with them, all of a sudden somebody on the stage goes, and I place a nomination in the name of Richard Milhouse Nixon. And somebody throws a sign in my hand <laughs> and starts marching me around the cow palace. And Mrs. Paley is disappearing behind me. <laughs> and I'm yelling and screaming, I got to go back. I got to go back. I'm, I'm not with, I'm, and I didn't want to do it for Nixon. I hated Nixon. My father told me. My father hated Nixon so much until I worked that convention. I thought Richard Nixon's first name was that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and here I am now walking around the cow pals holding a sign saying Nixon is for us. And I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, Well, I think I told you, you know, I was on the podium at the Democratic convention when Bill Clinton got nominated. Really? Wow. Oh, really? Amazing. 
Ann Richards had done our show that night and she uh, got it. She invited us and me and Morty got on the podium. Oh, hmm. really? Well, that's a nice, precious moment to keep in your memory, you know? Hmm. And also, that was the week where I introduced the Letterman executive producers to, um, what's his name at CBS? Who was? Stringer? Howard you know, Stringer? No, it wasn't. Who was the president of the head of CBS at that point? Uh, it wasn't Springer. Oh, the guy, the, the younger mm -hmm. guy. Um, no, the older guy. Well, Paley? I'm going up on the name right now. Was it Paley? Because NBC wouldn't let us into their suite. <sighs> so I went over to the CBS suite and they're like, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? No, I'm and then each night I would be bringing people like Peter LaSalle. Hey, do you want to go to the CBS suite tonight? I can get you in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. So, this... And that's where they made their first introductions to the, the executive producers about coming to CBS. I'm sure there was nobody here when Trump got nominated, right? You weren't in there. <laughs> uh, he's talking about, uh, about Clinton. I'm talking about having been there for Nixon. Uh, yeah. okay. Cynthia Nixon? Yeah. <laughs> Did Nixon run in 56? I know he ran in 60. He ran. I thought he tried to run. In, well, no. Well, he ran in 68 and 72. He ran. He was vice president in 56. Yeah, that's for, true. Yeah. And, and 52. When was so Kennedy? So did he try to nose out Eisenhower? Well, Kennedy was then elected. Well, that 60. Was 60. Yeah. Nixon ran against Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. it was 60. Well, it was Nixon Eisenhower, right? Yeah. Right. 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 It was vice president. Eisenhower, Eisenhower, Nixon. Eisenhower, Nixon. Eisenhower, Nixon. Eisenhower Nixon. 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 Yeah. He ran the president opposite Kennedy and got and lost because he had a five day growth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those, <laughs> or um, like, Kennedy's oh. father paid off Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was sweating so badly that his, his perspiration was dripping yeah. off of this. Yeah. 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 They yeah, said people who listened to it on the radio said Nixon won, and people saw it on TV said Kennedy won just because of his look. And Kennedy yeah. got a tan, he looked so nice. Wow. Oh, he's a nice young fellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, but he's he, Catholic. He, 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 he's still also. that son of a bitch. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> my father, the great story about that convention, too, was my father was a group of musicians. I'm sure I remember how many letters we're talking about, maybe nine letters. Uh, that spelled out, they had each of them had a letter on their back, but when they turned their back, it spelled out Eisenhower. <laughs> and they're all sitting there, standing there, waiting to go on. And uh, my father looked at all of them and said, ah, there are nine of us here. That's nice. He said, if they wanted to spell Ike, how many people here would be out of work? <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, it was, it was Larry Tish. That's the name I couldn't Larry remember. Tish. Yeah, okay. Tish, there you go. Yes. Tish. Okay. It was driving me crazy. He, was, he was in the suite and you know they're treating me like gold. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm the dumb schmuck from Letterman, and they're like, think I'm important. Well, they probably knew where their bread was going to be buttered someday. Well, whatever. Well, you spent so, in the control room um at the on the last episode when they when they cut to the control room. Oh, I'm in there. You're in that shot where Letterman said, Okay, keep it to three drinks. I thought that was a great line. Yeah, no, no, I'm in the far left. I'm the I'll tell you Letterman's back best line was. But, then but I did, did you keep it to three drinks? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you and not to tell stories out of school. We had gotten a phone call that our former assistant associate director was dying. Right after the show taped, I went up to the writer's conference room and made the largest shot of bourbon you've ever seen. Hmm. Wow. Because we wouldn't, we heard this about an hour before we taped, but we decided not to tell anyone. Wow. A few of us sat and said, We can't go to Dave and say, We just heard from Pete and he's in the hospital, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Wow. So when, by the time I got to the after party, I only stayed like an hour and then just went home. In going through YouTube, and I'll finish with this going through YouTube, I saw probably the funniest line Letterman ever gave, ever stayed, made. And it was on the Carson show. And it was right after, you know, he did not get the Tonight Show and Carson asked him, are you pissed? And Letterman's answer to that was, you know, with language like that, you're not going to be here very much. 
much longer. <laughs> uh, but then at one point, Carson says to him, very nicely, so he says, uh, did you ever want, uh, there's a rumor that you wanted to bomb NBC. And Letterman's line was, no, I make it a policy never to get in line. <laughs> wow. See, and that's the reason why Late Show is edges out late night for me is because that was the Letterman that I, in my formative years, I was like 13 well, years you old. Grew up with, you grew and up that with that one. It's, it's kind of like the, the, the James Bond you grew up with. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some people go, I love Roger Moore. And they go, are you crazy? <laughs> Dave's last two appearances on Carson are things that if I'm in a, if I'm in a sad mood, that's something I'll throw up on YouTube to make me, make myself smile. I love both those last two appearances so much. Hey, listen, we're are out of time here. And luckily we got Mandy oh, back for a cameo up here. Cameo. What? Hey, we can't, we can't hear you because your mic isn't on. I know, I said hush. <laughs> I was jumping back on here because I thought I was going to be able to participate because I thought everybody left, but no. <laughs> the big, like the big, the big man was still no, here. We, we got to do, Mandy, is make you president of that company. And then you can do anything you goddamn please. No, but the, the, the actual main dude came in and said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't, you know, he was all like, I'm sorry. Um, earlier when I had to get off, it was the other person. She was like, what are you doing? <laughs> She's so annoyed with me. Anyway, Don't they know uh, happy workers are productive workers? Yeah. Exactly. No, she <laughs> the, the, in Georgia for crying out loud. <laughs> but how much <laughs> but the main guy was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Client. <laughs> what? Right. I mean, said, how much louder would you be if you were talking to a client on the telephone? Right. Not, yeah. not loud at all. So. Like I said, it was just funny because well, this main you. person, and, and the Chuck, head honcho, it, was like, I'm so sorry I interrupted. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. And I was, <laughs> he goes, he goes you are you on a, you're on a Zoom call? I was like, it's, it's nothing. Like that. It's just yeah. a yeah, thing. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a thing. Just a bunch of friends hanging out. That's all I said. I go, it's, it's just the show I watch. And he was like, oh, okay. Uh, Where are your office supply vendors? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, All of them. I, I want anyway, to thank, you I gotta want go. thank Shecky for being here. I'll try to call you after the show, Shecky, but I do have a guest here. I'm sure. oh, uh, I'll call. I'll call you anyway. Uh, thank you, Shecky. Thank you, Mike Chisholm. Thank you to Edward Berger. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I am available for bar mitzvahs and weddings. So. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's a great voice. Uh, Steve Bender, thank you. Thank you, with Ann and Deutsch. Uh, Vernon Nunn, you look so relaxed. I wish I were down there getting some sun with you. Len LaFrisco, thank you. Marjorie Miller, thank you for being my wife once again. Uh, and uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you so much for being my husband. And uh, Mandy, thank you for risking your job. I just I, exactly. I mean, but I just I hate that I miss it. Y'all are so fun. I, I was like listening to this conversation and I was like, oh my God, this is a great conversation. We, will, we love you being there even if you don't say anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just nice to have you there. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. I want you to give a big wave goodbye to. <laughs> there, yes. Wait. Yeah. No. <laughs> I had three hands. No, those are not. Bye bye. Everybody. See, well, actually, this is. Yes, Nina is mine. But I will give this 